Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on setting the domain for a graph of a function on a Casio FX CG50. In this video we're going to use the CG50 to draw graphs of some given functions but with a set domain. So let's take a look at the first example here. We've got fx equaling sine x, where x can be any real number in the set of real numbers between minus pi and pi. So we've got our distinct domain there, and we've got our function sine x. So let's see how we can do this on the fx CG50. We need to go to option 5 from the menu, which is graph. And we're going to input our graph at first. So our first function here is sine x. Now, to be able to input a domain, what we need to do is to press comma at first, and then we want to open up a set of square brackets, square parentheses. So that's shift and plus to open that up to get a left square bracket. And then we want our lower limit for our domain, which in this case is negative pi, and then comma, and now we want to set the upper limit for our domain. So that's positive pi, so that's just pi, shift and pi, and then shift and the minus sign will give us a right bracket to close off the domain. Press execute and then we'll press F6 for draw. And you can see we have our graph drawn here between those limits. Let's just alter the view of the axes there. F3 for V window. And then I'm just going to set this to standard. That's F3 again. Execute and then execute again. And we can see our graph for sine x drawn between those two limits that we had, minus pi and pi. Let's just zoom in, F2 and F3 to zoom in, execute. And we can see our graph is drawn here between those limits. We haven't got anything outside of the domain that's been drawn. Right, let's go back and have a look at a second example. So it's exit. I'm just going to delete the first one off. So we've only got one graph on screen at this time. So let's just delete that. And then the second, second example that we have here, gx equals x squared. Input x squared, comma. Now we're going to define the domain. Shift and square left bracket. Then it's minus 4, negative 4, comma, and then 4. And then we want to close the square brackets. Execute and then F6 for draw. And we can see here that we've got our x squared drawn. I'm just going to alter the display again, F3, take it standard, draw again. And then let's just scroll up and have a look at this graph. You can see here it's capped at the top. We haven't got anything going beyond this. these two points here. These are where x equals negative 4 and 4. And we can trace that. If we go to F1 and trace, we can go all the way up here and we can see that the maximum value for y there is 16. That makes sense. That's 4 squared and then negative 4 squared, that's also 16. So you can see that we've got the uppermost points there and then no more. Okay, the last example in this video is going to be slightly different. What we have here is a piecewise defined function. So essentially a function that's got two different parts uh, depending on what values of x we have. So we have fx equaling 6 minus 2x for all values of x that are less than 1 and we have that same function of x equaling x squared plus 4 and that is for values where x is greater than 1 and what we need to do is we need to draw y equals fx and state the range of the function of x and then for part b we need to solve where fx equals 13 so let's just deal with part a first now i'm going to draw these as two separate graphs because that's probably the easiest way to do it let's delete off the x squared function there and we'll start with the topmost of the two pieces of the function that we have there so six minus two x and then we need to define the domain uh, so shift and left bracket now there's no lower limit to this so the best way to put this in is to put an extremely low number in the calculator I believe needs to have that defined so let's go for negative 9 times 10 to the 99 it's a really low number and then comma and our upper limit for this first piece of the function is 1 and then let's close our square bracket and then as y2 I'm going to put the lower part of the function in which is x squared plus 4 and then enter your comma we're going to define the domain so the 
lower limit to that is going to be one x is greater than or equal to one so the upper limit we'll just put in a large number so let's go for nine times ten to the 99 and then close the right square bracket there we'll just leave it at that for the moment so let's draw these and you can see that there's two parts two pieces to the function here the upper one there displayed in blue and the bottom one displayed in red let's just zoom in on this key bit in the center here where the two functions are very close to each other you can see here that we've got essentially two parts of the function at one remember that uh, for the blue it's values of less than one so for the value of one itself uh, we're going to be looking at the red function that's where it's equal so when x is one y would be five in this case from the function so just be careful on that if we want to define what the range is well let's just have a look at the blue part of the function here i'm going to put a trace on that let's go down when x is one we know that it can't actually equal four we know it's going to be five it's going to be the red part of the function here but we can have values all the way down to four on there there's not really going to be an upper limit as we can just have values of x going on forever well, there is going to be lower limit and we know it can't equal four so we know that the range for fx is greater than four so fx is greater than four part b now and we need to find where the function of x equals 13 what we're going to do is going going to go back to the input screen exit and then we're going to put in a third graph y3 in green of equaling 13 so that will be when fx equals 13 let's draw that and if we scroll up we should be able to see a straight line there going through 13 on the y-axis which represents when the function equals 13 you can see there are two intersection points there one between the blue part of the graph and one between the red part the two different pieces of the function and we're going to use gsolve to find out their location so gsolve we need to select which graphs we're going to intersect so we do want the blue piece here and then while well, the blue and red don't intersect so we need to press down and select the green that's what we're interested in and here we have our coordinates of our intersection point y equals 13 obviously and x equals minus 3.5 so we know that when x equals minus 3.5 y equals 13 so that is one of our solutions let's find the other intersection point then uh, so it's f5 intersect down to select the red piece of the graph and then we want the green y equals 13 and here we have our intersection uh, when x equals 3 so that is our second solution then so we've got x equals negative 3.5 and x equals 3 as being when fx equals 13. so there we go how we can set up a domain for the graphs that we draw on the fx cg50 don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos but that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time on the calculator guide